Good evening, Gospel Light family. Coming to you this nice evening here, after all the rain's gone, all the bad weather's gone. We're going to get into the Word of God here. Uh, praying these messages have been a blessing to you. Um, Lord willing, it won't be long. We'll be able to get back together, fellowship under one roof here, and uh, enjoy the, uh, the fellowship, presence of God as a family, and uh, be, ble be blessed by the pastor's preaching. We're going to be in Ephesians chapter 6 this evening. And the, uh, the message is the, uh, it's, it's about the armor of God and prayer. And um, prayer allows us to wear the armor of God. So not really sure how that title is going to work out there. I really didn't title it. But let's go to the Lord in prayer. Then we'll uh, get into his word. Father, we do thank you for your blessings. Lord God, we thank you for this opportunity to get into your word. Lord, we thank you that you have provided means that we can preach and broadcast your word, Lord, even when we're hindered and we can't get out. Lord, I'd like to ask that you would bless the uh, preaching of your word and the hearing of your word. I ask, Lord, that you would speak through me. Lord, that you would, everything that we do and say would glorify and edify you. And Lord, I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so we're going to be in Ephesians chapter 6, <clears throat> talking about the armor of God. And verses 13 through 20 is where we're going to be. Ephesians 6, 13 through 20. Um, probably most of us are very familiar with the armor of God. We've probably heard countless messages on it. Uh, but I will recap just a little bit on the armor. But you know, as this virus drags on and we find ourselves separated from our church family, we may be more prone to conflict with the enemy. Because simply because we don't have the fellowship of one another, being able to see one another two or three times a week, you know, just to, for a handshake or a Christian hug or, or to encourage one another, makes us a little more prone to, to the attack of the enemy. I mean, he's coming anyway, but, um, you know, it's just something else he might be able to get a little foothold in right there. And just remember, we are in a battleground. We're not in a playground. You know, we, we can kind of equate that, that God would, if we were in a playground, God would have gave us playground equipment. But he didn't. He gave us armor. And best of all, <laughs> he gave us the sword, the word of God. All right. I want to give us a brief recap of the pieces of armor. Then I want us to look at what enables us to wear the armor and what enables us to use the sword. I don't know if you really thought about it, about what it takes to wear the armor of God. That's really interesting. But let's read the word of God, then we'll break it down and get into it. We'll start at verse 13 of chapter 6. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked." And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may, be op that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel." For which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Now that's a very good request right there. And I would like to echo that request. Pray, pray, for, pray for us 
the, uh, the, the pastor, myself, the deacons, Brother Tom, all those that work here, pray for us that we will do God's will and that, and that we may speak boldly as we ought to. All right, let's look at the, uh, the armor here. The, uh, the girdle of truth, verse 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. The girdle or the belt, the, 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 the belt held everything together. Truth is in the integrating force in the life of a believer. A Christian of integrity and a clean conscience can face the enemy without fear. The girdle or the belt also held the sword. Think about this. Unless we practice truth, we cannot use the word of truth. The, um, a person of integrity. When, when we say something today and in two hours or two days or two years, we should be able to say the same thing and be telling the truth. No varying in what we say. So the, the, the belt of truth, it pulls everything together. If, if, if we're not an honest person, then our integrity is just, it's, it's, it's not gone. It's not there, it's gone. It is very loose. Our integrity will not stand up to the storms of life because we say one thing and we mean something else. Let's look at the breastplate of righteousness. This piece of armor covered the body from the neck to the waist. Breastplate of righteousness. And it covered it front and back. It symbolizes the believer's righteousness in Christ. It's, now it's symbolic. We know that Christ is our righteousness, but it is symbolic of our righteousness in Christ as well as our righteous life in Christ. Okay? Okay? When Satan accuses the believer, it is the righteousness of Christ that assures the believer of our salvation. The breastplate of righteousness. Um, when Satan comes against us and, and he, he, he hurls the accusations, and probably most of us, if not all of us, have had doubts concerning our salvation or any other thing in any, any other things in this Christian walk? Well, that uh, the breastplate of righteousness assures us of our salvation and that we are in Christ. Looking at the shoes of the gospel, if we're going to stand and withstand, then we need the shoes of the gospel. But we also need to be ready to take the gospel to the world. Now, a soldier, a Roman soldier on his sandals, on the bottom of them, he had little nails that were in the bottom of his sandals that would allow him to grip the ground or whatever surface he was on to be able to stand and fight. And we need that symbolically to be able to stand and fight. If you've got good footing, then you can ward off a lot of things that come your way just with good footing. But we also need to be, be ready to take the gospel. Now, we're a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church. We love to see people saved. And we are to take the gospel out of these four walls. Or, in this case now, as some, of, you know, some people are shut in, we need to take it out of your walls. And you can do that with a phone call, a text message, um, a post on Facebook. There again, God's provided all those things that we can use to get his word out. And I've said it here before, when you, if you mail out bills, you can drop a tract in that envelope and drop it in the mailbox. And whoever receives that bill may take time to read that tract. Ultimately, that's between God and that person. The shield of faith... This was a large shield. It was probably about four foot by four foot or so. And it was covered in leather. Now, that's kind of interesting. Because covered in leather, leather holds water. And that's, that shield, that wooden shield covered in leather, could be soaked in water 
And as the, as the flaming arrows from the enemy came toward them, they could get behind the shield and that water would extinguish that flaming arrow. Such as us, when we're behind the shield of faith and Satan is hurling the, the, uh, the fiery darts, the flaming darts to us to burn us down, to ruin whatever credibility we have, we can get behind that shield of faith and quench the fiery darts. Something else interesting about those shields. Those shields were so constructed that they, they would connect together. So this soldier here could link up with this soldier here and that soldier and et cetera, et cetera, and they could provide a wall of protection. All right? Something to consider there. We need to link up together with each other and pray. Our shield of faith. <clears throat> pray in faith. Link up with your other brothers and sisters in Christ and pray. Looking at the helmet of salvation, Satan wants to attack the mind. The helmet refers to the mind controlled by God. Now, when, when we reference, when we get saved and we reference Christ as our Lord, he has to be Lord of everything, all aspects of our life. From, from our, our finances, where we go, who we hang out with, um, what we watch on TV, what we put into our mind. Christ has to be Lord of all that. There's no options. He's either Lord of all or Lord of none. So the helmet refers to the mind controlled by God. When God controls the mind, Satan cannot lead the believer astray. So there again, how does God, how do we know the mind of God? How can God control our mind? Through his word and through prayer. Let God control your mind. We look at the sword of the spirit. And, and it's the only offensive weapon that we have. The rest are defensive. This here is offensive. And it's the word of God. A material sword pierces the body. But the word of God pierces the heart. And using God's word makes it sharper in our lives. We can, a person, even a master swordsman that can utilize a sword, it will get dull over time. Whatever he's using it for, it will get dull. But the word of God, our sword, our offensive weapon, the more we use the word of God, the sharper it gets in our life. It gets sharper. It cuts. The word of God said it, it cuts to the dividing of the bone and the marrow asunder. So use the word of God often. Don't be ugly with it. Don't figuratively beat people over the head with it. I just don't believe God would, would want us to do that. But God would want us to be bold in using his word. And God has promised to give us that boldness to use it. And the more we use it, the sharper it will get. And it will sharpen our lives. Alright, so we've looked at the armor. Now we're going to look at the activation of the armor. God has provided this armor for us. But we can't go to our closet and pull it out and put it on. Some days that would be really nice. <laughs> just, to, just to take care of things that need to be took care of. But we can't do that. So how do we activate this armor? Let's do a little recap here of verses 18 through 20 in Ephesians 6. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Man, that's a lot right there, amen? Verse 19, and for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. 
for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. All right. Praying. That's how we use the word of the, the armor of God. Praying. Um, in Exodus 17, 8 through 16, Moses was interceding for Israel when Amalek attacked them. And you're probably familiar with the story. Moses was up on a hill. And as long as Moses held his hands up, then Israel prevailed. But when he got tired and, and, and became weary in praying and worshiping God, as his hands come down, well, Amalek started um, overrunning Israel. So they held his hands up. They set him on a rock and held his hands up. And he prayed and he interceded on behalf of Israel. We are to pray. Prayer is the power for victory. Now you have to remember, Satan, he can harass us. He can, he can cause us to ruin our testimony, but he can't get us. When you're saved, you're saved. But we don't want to do anything that brings God dishonor or anything that would not glorify him. So we're fighting from victory. We're not fighting to gain victory. We're fighting from victory. Christ has won this victory for us. So we're to pray. And there's power in prayer. Pray always. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 tells us, pray without ceasing. Well, you know... Pray without ceasing. We can't, you know, I have a full-time job and husband and dad and everything and grandfather and, you know, so I can't be in my prayer closet all the time. So what can I do? And this is a very good lesson that I learned right after I got saved. This particular gentleman in the church, you know, he said, you know, even when he gets up through the night or whatever, you know, he, it, it would be praise the Lord. He would just, just praise God, glorify God. Or he would think of someone and pray for them. So we can do that all throughout the day. We can praise God for something. We can communicate with God. God will bring someone to our mind that he wants us to pray to him about. Now, God knows all the needs but he wants to hear from us. He desires to hear from his children. So pray without ceasing. Always in an attitude of communion with God. We must always be in an attitude of prayer because we're always subject to an attack from a devil. There have been many who was caught off guard by a surprise attack. Now, God lives in us the Holy Spirit. So we sh there, there shouldn't be an occasion for us to, to desire to come into the presence of God. We are in the presence of God because he lives in us. All right? So always be in an attitude of prayer and communion with God. We should never have an opportunity where we have to go Find God, okay? Never we should have to do that. We should be that close to God, constantly with Him on our minds, or something that we can bring before Him, particularly someone for someone else on our minds. All right, pray with all prayer. <laughs> now, what is this? Pray with all prayer. Prayer is general. Now, supplication, intercession, thanksgiving. So we have just general prayer. Then we have um, supplication prayer, intercession prayer, thanksgiving. <clears throat> we know prayer changes things. So does a prayer of intercession and of thanksgiving and thanksgiving. Praise changes things. Have you ever considered that? Praising God. Just praising God. 
Now, we don't have to run pews and uh, jump pews and run aisles and all that. Um, but but just, just praising God. As you're going about your, your, your daily routine, you know, just a simple praise the Lord. You know, communion with God, praising Him. So praise changes things. Intercession for others can bring victory in our lives as we're interceding for others. Job. Job interceded for others and it helped Job. Okay? So we can go to be a blessing to someone or for someone praying for them, praying for a need for them and God can bless us while we're praying for that person. Now, now don't, go, don't go just, you know, seeking a blessing. God knows our heart. But, but actually pray for someone. There's plenty of us out there with needs in our lives. Pray in the Spirit. Here is the biblical formula for prayer. Pray to the Father through the Son, and in the Spirit. All right? Pray to the Father, through the Son, and in the Spirit. All right, now I know kind of we could, we could mention in the Spirit and people, you know, some wild ideas might come to your head about people hanging from chandeliers or crawling on the floor or something like that, but that's, that's not the case, all right? That's not the, the biblical way. Romans 8, 26 and 27 tells us that only in the Spirit's power can we pray in the will of God. Turn back to that. Romans 8, 26 and 27. It says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints, look here, according to the will of God. All right? <clears throat> so, pray to the Father through the Son and in the Spirit. All right. In the and put you in the will of God praying. Watching. Going back to Ephesians. Watching. Um, keep it on the alert. Watch and pray. When, when, when we're praying, stay alert for what God wants to tell us. The Holy Spirit will impress, will impress on you on the average, as you're praying for maybe something else to pray, to pray about. I don't want to say pray for because we might wander off on a trail wanting a new, a new something that we don't need, okay? But just stay alert and, and be sensitive to what the Holy Spirit is telling us as we're praying. All right, keep on praying. Perseverance. Stick to it. Don't quit. What was it? The unjust judge had awarded the lady um, something because. Uh, excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm trying to hunt something else here. Be because of her constant worrying him, he granted what she was after. Okay. So perseverance, keep on praying. And we're still talking about the armor of God and how to access it and how to use it. So prayer. Pray for all saints. Pray for one another. Every child of God needs your prayers and my prayers. You know, I know sometimes we can, we can just kind of go down that road where, you know, Lord, I'd really like to have this, or God, I, I, I really need that. 
But there's people out there with honest needs. Uh, you know, people with this virus or people that because of what's going on now, they can't get out and work. People have needs, tremendous needs. And I'm grateful for what God has provided for us and for them in this time of needs. But you know, the model prayer, our Father which art in heaven, you see how that starts. It says, our Father. It doesn't say mine, but our Father. So as you're spiritually putting on the armor of God, be mindful of that other person, someone that, that has a need, someone that God brings a need to your mind and that he wants to hear you pray for them. Don't be like this lady here because she did not persevere. A woman left her diamond brooch in a hotel. When she got home, she remembered her brooch and called the hotel. She told the manager what happened, and he went to look for it. He found it. He found her brooch. He put it in a safe, taking care of it for her, and he went back to the phone. He was going to tell her the good news, but she had hung up. He found what she wanted, but she didn't have the perseverance. So many of us are like this. We aren't willing to wait on the Lord. Um, many view God only in a kind of heavenly genie, ready when you rub the lamp of prayer to appear and say, Yes, Master, what do you want me to do? But God is not like that. God is sovereign. God moves according to his own purpose and does not play games with us. He is not to be mollified and placated by a temporary return to him when we get into difficulty. It goes back to being in the attitude of prayer. Constantly in the attitude of prayer. And then the perseverance. Persevere. There was a, a, a husband and wife in a, in a small airplane. And the, he was the pilot. And he had passed away behind the controls. And the lady really didn't know how to fly the plane. But she was trying. For two hours she was trying to fly that plane. And... She would get on the radio and she would call for help. And a tower would pick up. But she kept changing the channel. So they couldn't talk her, couldn't talk to her how to safely land a plane. She got it down. But then it was a 45 minute crawl to a farmhouse before she could get some help. Don't change the channel on God. Stay on God's frequency. I'm going to give you one more. A four-year-old boy once saw a picture of Christ praying and asked what Jesus was doing in that picture. When he was told that Jesus was praying, the youngster responded by asking who Jesus was praying to. After being told that Jesus was praying to God, the young boy replied, but Jesus is God. This same thought was captured well by St. Um, Cyprian, who said, if he prayed who was without sin, how much more it becomes a sinner to pray. Amen? I hope this has been a blessing. I pray you get some some good out of this. Um, Lord willing, we will be back hopefully before long and I'll be able to fellowship one another. Let's pray. Father, I do thank you for this time that we've had to be in your word. Lord, thank you for using me. Lord, I ask that you would overlook my, my mistakes and my shortcomings. 
Lord, I ask that you would bless those that, that hear your word. And Lord, I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.